Welcome back to Aze News, and here is the latest news with me, Vanessa. Thailand has another changed school wearing into high fashion. Thailand's school uniform rules are strict, start from hair, socks and shoes for students to wear. As students around the country push back against what they call archaic rules and join a broader pro-democracy movement, a young clothing designer is throwing his support behind them in a colorful way. Tin Tusopon takes the typical uniforms of pleated skirts, such as white sailor shirts for girls and knit shorts and white shirts for boys. By recreating these uniforms and through various designs, people can see that we should no longer be attached to the traditional uniforms. Tin hopes that his design will also help change the mindset of people by how they wear their uniforms, good or bad of students, of the way they wear their uniforms. Skirt hems, colors of shoes, colors on up or down should not be used to judge the wearer. I want people to consider the uniform style based on the students' interest, not the interest of others. We should be supporting whatever they feel comfortable wearing it. In the end, the uniforms that break away from traditional structures, although they will resemble uniforms, they are creative. We want to support kids so that they can be as creative as they can. The exclusive ready-to-wear collaboration of Vocal to launches with prices ranging from $100 to $475 for a piece. Bakery dealer in Thailand selling mooncakes online on mid-autumn festival amid of coronavirus outbreak. A nearly 100-year-old family-run bakery selling the popular Teochew mooncakes in Bangkok. Honor bakeries are selling mooncakes online for this year's mid-autumn festival, which is known locally as the Moon Festival, to cushion the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Garn Tarutu Yasiri says, the store has expanded online sales channels as part of efforts to adapt the new reality of COVID-19. Tile watching Sen Bakery and all of our revenue came from sales at the store. But since the COVID-19 outbreak, in-store sales have dropped 50%. Therefore, we had to make some adjustments. We expanded sales channels online and began to take orders on social media platforms like Facebook. And then we will use delivery services to distribute the mooncakes to consumers. The tiny Cantonese restaurant bakery is packed full of mooncake gift sets and according to the owner, the mooncake turnover is better than expect with orders coming in from the internet, phones and other channels. At the very beginning we expected sale for this year to reach only 70% of last year's, but the market response was better than we anticipated. We now expect sales to reach at least 90% of last year's level, or even hit levels comparable to last year. Mooncake is a hallmark tradition of the Mid-Autumn Festival. British and Vietnam discusses about progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership and COVID-19. United Kingdom Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab says the Britain secure Vietnam's public support for it to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or the CPTPP. The announcement came during his visit to Vietnam, which has recently signed a free trade agreement with the European Union. Rad adds, this is a significant step in taking the United Kingdom and Vietnam economic relationships to the next level, demonstrating the United Kingdom's commitment and value to the region. The United Kingdom government is looking to strengthen its relationship with the ASEAN bloc as well as Vietnam. Rab met with the Vietnamese Foreign Minister Pam Bing Min for talks aiming to boost trade ties and also Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc. The CPTPP, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, is a free trade agreement that links Canada, Australia, Brunei, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore and Vietnam. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab visiting the militarized zone in South Korea. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab visits the heavily guarded demilitarized zone that divided the two Koreas and expressing support for South Korea's effort to improve relations with North Korea. The so-called demilitarized zone 
which was established in 1953, is one of the most heavily guarded borders in the world, with more than a million North Korean soldiers stationed nearby. Rob is on a multi-country visit to South Korea and Vietnam and is scheduled to meet his counterparts and open the United Kingdom and Vietnam Health Conference. South Korea and the United States adopt North Korea's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. North Korea's media says North Korea has not confirmed any coronavirus infections and has imposed strict virus control measures including closing borders, although South Korea and the United States doubt that it has managed to avoid the pandemic completely. Leader Kim Jong-un reviews anti-coronavirus measures that participants find some faults in their implementation. The state-run television KRT aired a video of Kim holding a meeting of the ruling Workers' Party's powerful Politburo. KRT did not elaborate on the faults. KRT says the Politburo meeting also discusses preparation for the party's 75th founding anniversary in the week coming, a major holiday that North Korea usually celebrates with a big military parade. A local resident in Bali returned to seaweed farming after foreign tourists are barred to entry to the country on coronavirus pandemic. Gede Dharma Putra, before pandemic, he was provided driving lessons to sunbathing tourists near the very same spot as the seaweed farms. He lost his job on pandemic and he returned Gede Rap's seaweed growing on lines, sourcing through them, and dries the aquatic vegetable in preparation for sale. The government closed the borders, not allowed the foreign to enter the country because of the pandemic. I feel sad because we lost our job and now we have to start from scratch. Like it or not, we have to start again due to the situation. When Reuters visit the island, most restaurants and bars are shut and the empty streets are filled with seaweed, which is farmers laid them out to dry in the sun. I'm optimistic that I can survive with the seaweed business. Once tourism returns, I will go back to work in the tourism industry and my wife will stay at seaweed farming. After I'm done with work, I can help her. In addition, head of Indonesia Seaweed Industry Association says seaweed is one of the commodities that is being promoted in Europe. They already export to European markets. Seaweed is one of the commodities that is being promoted in Europe. Members of Australia make export plans to Europe markets by working with the CBI Netherlands, which has provided expert consultation to help the seaweed producers to find unique selling proportions for each company. Supaya bisa mencari unique selling proposition masing-masing perusahaan. Many Lembongan Islanders long for tourism to return. Seaweed farming says it's harder work than the tourism industry and provides fewer returns. Farmers say to Reuters that around 12,000 rupiah or equal to $8 per kilo for the marine plants, they make around 5 to 6 million rupiah per month. Indonesia is the world's second biggest seaweed producer next to China. According to the Indonesia's Natural Resources Network, seaweed farming in Lembongan started out in 1978. The aquatic vegetable is dried and processed and exported to be used in everything from food additive to cosmetics. On China's Smartest Day, Chinese president pays tribute to national heroes at Tiananmen Square. Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China's Central Committee and Chairman of the Central Military Commission and other leaders of the Communist Party of China, attended a ceremony to present flowers baskets to deceased national heroes at the Tiananmen Squares on China's March this day. Other senior leaders, including Li Keqiang, Li Shangzhu, Wang Yang, Wang Huning, Zhao Lezi, Hang Zheng, and Wang Qishang also attended the event. A military band played trumpets to commemorate the Martyrs' Day. President Xi straightened the red ribbons on the baskets and led a group of senior officials in a walk around the monument to pay tribute. Children and other attendees also lay flowers at the foot of the monument. The foundation stone of the monument to the people's heroes was laid on September 13, 1949. Vietnam says Chinese military drills can break maritime code. 
During a regular briefing, Vietnam says military drills conducted by Beijing in South China Sea will hurt negotiations on a regional maritime code of conduct for dispute waters. Chinese military drill in the Parcel Archipelago is a violation of Vietnam's sovereignty over this archipelago, contradicting the joint statement between China and ASEAN countries on the code of conduct in the East Sea complicating the matter, and it is not constructive toward the negotiation process of the code of conduct. She adds the exercises could complicate efforts to start talks on a long-awaited code between China and Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The resumption of the Code of Conduct negotiations after a long pause due to the pandemic is the priority of ASEAN countries and China. China, which has four years been locked in maritime disputes with other coastal states in the South China Sea. Vietnam says the presence of Chinese bombers on the parcel island jeopardizes peace. Vietnam demands that China respect its sovereignty and does not repeat such drills in the area. The COC has been a state goal of ASEAN and China for nearly two decades. Wuhan residents praises to worldwide support to beating coronavirus outbreak. Residents of Wuhan, the capital city of central China, Hubei province, expresses gratitude for the nationwide help in beating the COVID-19 epidemic and have come to cherish their life more after, more after this ordeal. Ding Zhaoying, a student of Wuhan University, says she never misses school so much during the lockdown. My name is Ding Zhaoying, a senior student at Wuhan University. I'm studying in the School of Marxism. I was among the last group of students who came back to the university. Students were asked to come back to school in batches because of the prevention and control measures. I was very anxious when seeing others who had already shared pictures of the campus on social media apps. I really wanted to come back too. It was really nice to meet the teachers and classmates again. When I was finally here, walking on campus and studying in a classroom was normal in before the COVID-19 outbreak. Now I cherish all the small things in life. Wuhan is a really heroic city. As a student in Wuhan, I feel I have responsibility to come back to the city and contribute something here. Lujia, a worker at Donfen Motor Corporation, says production of the company has returned to normal. My name is Lu Jia. I'm a worker on the assembly line of the passenger vehicles for Donfeng. We are only able to produce dozens of cars a day when the factory resumed its operation on March the 12th. Today we are producing 350 cars per day. It means production has fully recovered. I'm really excited. They are actually the best numbers in the time I have worked here, which is nearly six years. Our sales volume keeps rising too. The local government gives us many favorable policies. If people buy cars made in Wuhan, they can receive subsidies. That's why we are able to sell more cars. And then we produce more cars, then I earn more. Shuyan, a local resident, expresses appreciation for the return of her normal life and for all the help people gave nationwide. My name is Xu Yan. I'm one mother accompanying my daughter to prepare for next year's college entrance exam. I think one is a right city. All of one's residents are heroes. During the lockdown, people choose to stay home. Only those who had to work, like volunteers, went to work, went to provide services after the pandemic. I think people in Wuhan became grateful for all they have. We cherish today's return to normal life. Students are grateful to study in school. We cherish going back to work. I think I'm busier than before. We feel behind for a couple of months due to the epidemic. We wish to catch up. When we sing our national anthem, many will shed tears because we have gone through a really hard time. This is the first national day after the epidemic. We want to express our gratitude to all the people who gave us assistance and support. We open our door and welcome them to Wuhan. Coronavirus outbreak has appeared in Wuhan, the capital city of central China's Hubei province, in the end of the month of 2019.
and becomes a pandemic globally and worldwide. During a meeting, British and Vietnamese discusses about trade ties. British Foreign Minister Dominic Raab met with his Vietnamese counterpart, Pam Binh Min, in Hanoi to talk about boosting up trade ties between the two countries. Rob and Min rubbed elbows at the capital's government guest house and sat down for a meeting where the two foreign ministers meeting to strengthen ties between both countries. During his two-day visit to Vietnam, Rob is scheduled to meet with Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc and also hold virtual meetings with other foreign ministers of ASEAN member countries. As the country comes out of its Brexit transition period, the United Kingdom government is looking to strengthen its relationship with the ASEAN bloc, as well as Vietnam, as the Southeast Asian country recently signed a free trade agreement with the European Union. We hope you enjoy our news program for today. Have a nice day and see you again.